on a picture-perfect Saturday in Tallahassee, the number three Florida State Seminoles look to conquer the unconquered Invitational as they close things out against the Hofstra Pride. We welcome you to the broadcast booth, Sean Salisbury, back with the All-American Alex Powers, and boy, were we treated to a great finish just half an hour ago, Florida State storming back to take down the Indiana Hoosiers. Talk about a nail biter of a game. I mean, it took the entire duration of the game to even come through and get a solid at bat or a couple of bats off of Heather Johnson, who was throwing great. And it was a Josie Muffley show to end things, starting with a leadoff triple in the bottom of the sixth. Josie Muffley just gets enough of the ball to kind of fall through, miss cue from right field, and just takes full advantage, motors around the bases, and is so ecstatic to come through and deliver for her team. And then not much later, Mac Leonard delivered the game-winning hit. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. We know how good Mac Leonard is, and she comes through, no question asked. But the Knolls still had to finish out the seventh, and what a way to cap off the comeback. Beautiful diving effort by Josie Muffley. We've seen it from her multiple times. The athleticism is unmatched. And now the Seminoles get the ball back in the circle. Pat one of the Sandercock. best in the country, the National Pitcher of the Week, Seminoles Kat Sandercock, who closed out that Wilson, seventh Jordan inning, Cameron, trying to pick up Katie right Rappen. where she left off after a shutout State, win in five coach, innings yesterday Bonnie against Alameda. Indiana. Kat Sandercock, 7-0 and on the season, a .7 ERA, so good in the circle and such a leader for the Seminole squad. Yeah, kind of run out of superlatives at this point, <laughs> trying to describe her. She has just been so dominant, so fierce, so consistent after shutting down five top 25 opponents last week down in Clearwater. That was then, this is now. She faces Chelsea Manto to kick things off in our fourth and final game of the Unconquered Invitational. Trying to square to bunt, Manto takes strike one. Manto is a really good hitter for this Hofstra squad, a junior hitting 440 on the season, 11 hits in her 25 at-bats, and somebody that is really a tooled athlete. The Pride only got three hits off Danielle Watson in a shutout loss yesterday. Manto, who is the team's leader in hits, quickly falls behind 0-2. Like we mentioned, Sandercock with five innings pitched against Indiana yesterday as the Knolls went nine to nothing, putting up six runs in the bottom of the floor. Manto with a good swing, but drives it foul towards the hill. But still a great catch made as we poke our heads out the window here. A great <laughs> crowd that has stuck around for game two. Gotta love the athleticism from the fans, right? They see it enough, they should know how to do it. That's how it works. Saw Josie Muffley with one of the best defensive plays of the entire season so far. Trying to make her proud as she watches on from the dugout. Anto smacks another one in a similar spot. Count remains 0 2. First game we saw Indiana come out, just a whole different ball club than we saw yesterday. And, and so far, only the first step batter. The first batter right here for the Hofstra Pride, but still seeing Chelsea Manto going head to head with Kat Sandercock saying, hey, I know you're really good, but look at what I can do. Manto puts this one in play over to third is Cheryl across the diamond for the first out as she nearly beat out the throw. Some changes in the Florida State lineup. What do you expect out of this nine on the field today? I still expect to see Sid Cheryl, Dev Flaherty really take charge on the infield. Mac Leonard over at first base, really good defender. And the young Blankenship at shortstop, not a lot of experience. Obviously, she's kind of sharing time right now with Josie Muffley, but Brooke is still a really good defender. And then our outfield, they have so much speed in the outfield. Good experience for Way Caser as well in left field. Second batter up, Casey Collins. of six seniors in the batting order for Hofstra today. Takes that one inside, ball two. It'll be interesting to see from the pride. Didn't have a lot of success against the Seminoles yesterday. 
were shut out against the Hoosiers earlier today in a game that started at 11 a.m. local time. And a bit of a break for the first inning this afternoon. What do you like about the approach from Hofstra just trying to get it in play and maybe beat out a throw? Hofstra looks really slow in the box right now, which that means they're seeing the ball well. I think when hitters are moving really fast and really out of control, you can see the nervousness in them. But when you have a hitter, that, hitter that's under control, you can see just the composure and the poise. Now two and two to Collins. You know, they say when the game seems slow and feels slow to you, you're doing something right. And that's the goal of every athlete is to not allow it to seem bigger, faster, more than it really is. Another ball to third, Cheryl easily takes care of the first two outs. We're going to see that consistently over there on the left side of the field with Sid Cheryl, Brooke, Brooke Blankenship on the left side as the defenders, but just getting a lot of action because that's how Kat Sandercock rolls. She's a very good pitcher, but her defense is going to have to work behind her. She will get the strikeout, absolutely. Her balls have so much bite and downward spin, but really just allowing the defense to work behind her because she's going to stay around the zone. So good hitting teams are going to go on the attack. Chopper hit to second, flipped over to first, and Flaherty takes care of the third and final outs. Sandercock puts the pride down in order as we head to the bottom of the first in Tallahassee. Haley Venturini makes her fourth start of the season for Hofstra. The freshman getting put through the ringer in her first season as a collegiate athlete. What should we expect from her against the Seminole one? Venturini is going to be a really good competitor in the circle. Coach Clark says that I want her in the circle because I know that she's going to go out there and work her tail off and compete against the opposing hitters. She's got a very big presence, and she loves to attack the zone. She's going to mix speeds a little bit and really just try to keep the hitters off balance. Janai Kerr once again leads off for FSU. Lefty ready to go. So important in that sixth inning. Buffley had the leadoff triple. Kerr brought her home, and then it was Mac Leonard who had the go-ahead two-run home run. Janai Kerr has so many tools in her little toolbox over there. She's got some speed. She's got some power. She can place the ball well and then just really allow her skill to take over, allow herself to run and just motor around the bases. But there are so many things that she can do. She can bunt. She can swing it and really just tapping into what the team needs in that moment and what she's feeling that she can do well. Quickly 3-0 the count to Kerr, who almost had a home run herself. It was about six, eight feet yeah. away from putting it over the right field wall. Hit a double and was eventually thrown out at third. With that speed, like you said, Florida State loves with what she brings to the table in the leadoff spot. Yeah, we saw her turn on a couple pitches extremely well. The the ball that scored Muffley, the hard ground ball to second base that she really just got on top of and attacked. And then earlier in the game off of Johnson, the one that she just unloaded on and drove to the right field wall. Five pitch walk for Kerr to lead things off. He trots on over to first and that brings up. Up next, number 13, Matt responsible. Leonard. Getting Florida State to 14-0 on the home run to center field. Mac Leonard's been a really good pickup so far for Florida State. A transfer in and has just come into the lineup, immediately made an impact, and somebody that can have so much leadership. Smacks one towards the gap and off the wall in right center field. Kerr's in standing up at second. And it's a double for Mac Leonard. Shooting arrows out there. Pinpoint now precision the goals, number from eight, the senior. Kaylee Harden. Mac Leonard has such a beautiful left-handed swing, allows the ball to get so deep in the hitting zone and just takes full advantage of a pitch over the heart of the plate, drives it right back up the middle. You love to see it. After the Knowles had just a couple of hits through five innings. 
They already have runners on second and third. Bring up the always dangerous Kaylee Harding. We're gonna miss, good pitch. Venturini to get that strike. Try and stay ahead in that count. Something up in the zone. She's going to continue to go right at these Florida State hitters. And Kaylee Harding, so young, so much career left in her, only a sophomore, but such a very, very good and disciplined hitter in the box. And again, kind of gets a little frustrated with herself on that one. A little bit fooled, um, but she knows. She knows where she, what she has to do and where she's at mentally. Starting to see a little bit more patience from the Seminoles. I know in those first two innings, at least, going against Heather Johnson of Indiana, the Dolls were put down six outs in. 19 pitches. Yeah, and that's the name of the game. It's it's a balance between aggression and patience. Harding shoots one into the gap. Two runs are in, and Florida State quickly jumps on top, two to nothing. Back to back doubles for Leonard and Harding gets the party started. Stepping up for the Knolls, number 51. No surprise here. Kaylee Harding gets a pitch in the zone that she can just capitalize on, again, right over the heart of the plate. And that's what Venturini is really going to have to be mindful of because these Florida State hitters are so good, so talented, you've really got to try to keep it out of the zone. Venturini pitched four innings against Indiana yesterday. Gave up five hits, five runs. Only two of those were earned, though. How do you try and settle down a young pitcher trailing two to nothing already? You gotta let him work through it a little bit. The nerves are gonna be high and that's natural. I mean, that's not gonna go away probably for the rest of their career, but just keeping them in the moment, letting them know that you've still got their back. And you know, that's something that Coach Clark touched on so heavily was failure. Failure recovery, knowing that it's gonna happen and that we're okay to accept it because we're gonna make mistakes, but how are we gonna respond? Ed and Fields, who had an absolute moonshot in the first inning yesterday against the Pride. A couple of home runs, drove in six runs herself. Is that good, Sean? It's pretty efficient, <laughs> I think, right? You're the legend on this field. That ball gets by Devin Lasco, and Harding will gladly take third. Michaela is so patient in the box, which is something that I'm extremely glad to see this game because last game you could see she was trying to force it, and that's kind of the momentum that these kids get into as they're young, they don't really know, they're still trying to figure themselves out, and so they're like, well, I'm having some success, I gotta continue to have success, and the only way I'm gonna find that is to continue swinging. But you don't wanna get yourself out in moments, and right now, I love her patience in the box, and I love her demand for Venturini to come right to her. Adrian Clark, the Hofstra legend, led the Pride to six NCAA tournament wins over the last couple, of, or excuse me, in her last couple of years with the Pride in 2003 and 2004. That's what she said, it's a young team. It is our program's third coach in the last four years. I just want them to go out there, learn from mistakes, not play with any pressure. And this was a good opportunity playing Two power five opponents five times in three days here in Tallahassee. Yeah, and Coach Clark continues to surround herself with really solid coaches around her. You've got Kristen Sandberg and Ashley Weingart's really stout coaching staff and just the, the ability to bring good people into a program that has felt like it's been ever changing and really just to allow for some consistency for these young athletes. Edenfield lays off to take a four-pitch walk. Runners now on first and third for Florida State. Batting number nine, Devin Flaherty. Now in comes Devin Flaherty, who had a three-run shot herself in yesterday's win. 
Dev Flaherty, a junior for the Florida State squad, hitting 459 with 17 hits so far on the season, has been so consistent in the box. Not somebody that has a ton of power, but showed us a home run yesterday. And she has so much potential and, and the ability to drive the ball and make things happen for her team. She's got a little bit of speed, and we know that she's smart on the bases. What have you loved about her improvement since coming onto campus a few years ago? I think that she's continued to learn. And I think that, you know, Travis always said it best when I was here and he was my coach is, Alex, at some point you're going to reach your physical ability, but the thing that you never have to cap out on is the mental side, the smarts of the game, and your ability to understand situations, and that's how you're going to be better. Because as these athletes continue through their career, they're going to get found out. They're going to know their weaknesses. And put together another hitting clinic. Like clockwork, the Seminoles have put everybody on base thus far. The knock into right field is Flaherty, another RBI, as Venturini quickly falls into trouble down 3-0. That's what you'll continue to see from Dev Flaherty, somebody that is really a student of the game, and to me, that's what I'm most proud of for her. It looks like we'll see a pitching change from Hofstra here in the bottom of the first inning. Florida State firing on all cylinders. Up three runs, they'll try to add to it as we make a pitching change early in Tallahassee. <laughs> Coach Clark hands the ball to Julia Apsell, who was phenomenal against this Knowles lineup yesterday, but comes in missing all kinds of pressure, trailing by three, and runners on first and second. Absol had held the Knowles yesterday to only three runs, so effective in the circle, mixed in a changeup extremely frequently, threw it in all counts, and just somebody that is really gonna aim to keep these Seminole hitters guessing. Cheryl pops one up in foul territory, and there to make the catch is Sam Ward. Finally get the first out of the inning on the sixth batter. Next up for the Knowles, number one, Allie Wickaker. We were really impressed with what Absell did throwing the complete game. Six innings, like you said, only gave up those three runs and a lot of five hits against a very consistent offense for Florida State. That's what we're continuing to see this weekend. So many of these oppon opponents right now with Indiana and Hofstra having such young pitching staffs. And to me, the most impressive thing is their ability to go at a number three ranked team in the country and compete and not feel or not look like they're overwhelmed. Delivers a strike to make it an 0-2 count. Put the pressure on Waycaser. And a four freshmen in the starting lineup in the back half of a double header for Coach Ah. Get back behind the plate. So in that 0-2 count, if you're trying to impart some of your wisdom <laughs> on these Florida State freshmen, how do you try and settle down in this spot? Uh, knowing that obviously you're in a little bit more of a defensive situation here in the box, but knowing that the game doesn't change, you've still got to find something around the zone and you're ready to hit anything. I think that's the beauty of hitting early in the count. I mean, I was always a big proponent of, I want to swing at the first strike. I don't want to get deep in a count, but if I am, I'm comfortable enough to do it. But just trying to be aggressive within reason, right? You're sitting pitches. You're trying to pick something out that you can drive. Waycaser gets a piece of that. A good leap over a shortstop from Megan Giordano. Edfield has to retreat to second to avoid the double play, but here we go once again. Julie Absell comes in, even in a tight spot, has gotten back-to-back -back outs. Absell getting that ball on Waycaser's hands, and Giordano makes a great catch over at shortstop. We saw her come through defensively yesterday on a ground ball play at home. Super, super composed and really just keeps herself all together. Senior leadership in a very important position. Now Amaya Ross getting her first start of her career. In the number eight spot for the Knowles. Trying to capitalize with an early lead. Ross hammers it to right field. It's over the head of Iaquinto. Two runs come in. Ross is safe into third with a two-run triple. Amaya Ross 
does a fabulous job of just going with the pitch, hitting something on the right side of the field. And Kocha has referred to her as the fastest player in Florida State history. She can run the bases so well. That ball's on the downward part of the plate, and she lets it get so deep in the zone. Ian Quinto unable to come up with it, and Ross just a menace on the bases. Got the big smile looking back. Something special about this team, even though losing so many starters from last year's team that made it to the National Championship Series. They reload with some great talent, like you said, the freshman. Coach Ah described as athletic, like you said, one of the fastest players we have seen coming into this program. Her dad is a former Florida State football player, so just athleticism runs in the family. And as a coach, I don't know how you don't recruit that because when you have tooled athletes, if you're a good coach, you can coach them up. And, and that's something that Coach Ah and the rest of the staff with Troy and Travis take so much pride in because they know that as a recruit, they don't need every top recruit in the country, that if they can get somebody with some potential, that they have the capabilities to be able to coach them up and make them an outstanding player. Blankenship takes the walk on four pitches. I see what you did there, runs in the end. <laughs> you can't put no that one intended, over my head. Yeah. <laughs> Stepping into the box, number four, Boston, a great culture for Florida State. We have seen it, we have heard about it. I know you're talking about just getting emotional coming back to campus yesterday for the first doubleheader we had. And you wonder, well, how is Florida State 14-0 trying to get that 15-0 mark for just the fourth time in program history? As Kerr steps in for the second time this inning, you can just see how easy it is for freshmen to assimilate in this environment. You cultivate a culture of acceptance, and I think that that's the biggest component of this program and the tradition that this program holds is it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you come from, you have a place here, but you are going to have to earn your way. And I think that nothing good in life is given for free, everything is earned, and you have these freshmen coming in and working their tail off. The 2-0 to Kerr. Knocks it back foul. Already 32 pitches thrown this inning. From Hofstra's Haley Venturini and then Julia Apsil having to come on, facing a three-run deficit. Rolls lead is now five as Kerr whiffs on strike two. And that's the beauty of playing loose as a hitter. You're up five runs in the first inning. You're going into the box to take hacks because you are trying right now to build that confidence for the rest of the season. They're trying to keep the dream start alive for the Seminoles. Like they said after yesterday, they wanted to jump on top of Hofstra and Indiana after having some slow starts those two games yesterday. Or did they come alive after that 30 minute intermission following the win against Indiana? Yeah, sometimes we need a little bit of those gut checks and those humble realities of, hey, we know we're great, but we can still be beat any given day. And when you've got a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, you have these teams coming in with a target on your back, you've got to be ready to show up. Kerr, skies one towards right field. Iaquinto is under it. And finally, finishes the first inning. Oh, the Seminoles came ready to jump on the pride with five runs in the first. Mac Leonard leads the way as the Noles head to the second. Florida State jumps on top five to nothing after one. We are so excited to be joined by the woman of the hour, Josie Muffley, with two huge plays to lead Florida State to win over Indiana. I guess we should start with the web gem, one of the most impressive plays we've seen in all of softball this year. Can you take us through what you saw on the last play of that game and how you had to extend as much as you could to grab that ball? Yeah, I mean, Kat was out there pitching her, her butt off. Um, I knew that we were going that rise in and I maybe a fisted shot here, so I scooted back a little bit, um, gave myself a little more room to hopefully potentially get that fisted shot in left, uh, left field. 
Um, I know Autumn's behind me, and I know she's coming in hard, and I know she's a diver as well. So the whole time I was trying to go get that ball, I was just thinking in my head, like, where's Autumn, where's Autumn? But um, thankfully she backed off a little bit and gave me the room to go ahead and lay out for that catch and um, lay out for my team, really, because these pitchers have uh, been doing amazing, amazing job here in that game, which was a fun game to be in, and uh, we got a lot of learning experiences from that as well. Awesome. Josie, how do you tell me a little bit about your communication in practice, pregame, during the game with Kocha, with the teammates around you in the field, and really your positioning and the ways in which the hitters are going to be attacked? Uh, yeah, communication is a big thing here at Florida State. Um, we do the pre-pitch talk, um, which we see a lot with our middle infielders and the whole infield, really. Um, we're, as a middle infielder, we're turning around as well and talking to our outfielders, making sure that they're in the right spot or if they have sun in their eyes, if we need to come across and help them. Um, communication is a huge thing. We t work on it all the time in practice. We do fly ball communications. Um, I mean, there's times where we, we literally just <laughs> – talk to our pitchers the entire time just to make sure we're saying the right things and what not to say and how to get our pitchers fired up and let them know we're in their hip pocket as well. Very good, very good. Tell me a little bit about your and Brooke Blankenship's relationship. A little bit of competition going back and forth, but you as a senior, her as a freshman, what does that look like? How are you encouraging her and then how is she challenging you? No, it's great having Brooke here. Um, She's an amazing athlete. She makes some great plays on the out, um, infield, and she has been amazing here at the plate as well. Um, getting her a lot of good looks at some pretty good teams as well, which has been amazing. Um, when she first got here, I kind of took her under my wing, and I knew that she was going to push me, and I was going to push her, and we have this really cool connection. Um, we kind of just know each other, and um, we can't look at each other, and we're like, oh, yep, this is what we're doing, and which is so cool to have as a freshman, too, and um, knowing that she's in my hip pocket and I'm in hers as well, um, it only helps the team and helps us grow. Has there been anything specific that has surprised you most in how you guys have gotten off to this hot start? No, I mean, it's Florida State softball. What do you expect? <laughs> um, no, but we've been, we've been working our butts off. Um, behind the scenes we're coming in extra doing our extra work um, and too like w our connection as a family with this team 39 has been amazing um, it's nothing it's su sorry got distracted we had a <laughs> had a ground ball there no but it's been it's been super special team at team 39 and um, we've just been you know taking it day by day and game by game which has been yeah. awesome we'll let you get back to work with Brooke thank you so much for joining us Josie appreciate it thanks guys for having me Cat works through the order from Hofstra the five nothing lead still intact as we All head right, to the bottom of the second All smiles in yeah, Tallahassee number the number hill three. has been packed Matt all day Leonard. the sunshine is quickly fading away as we hit 4.30 on a lovely Saturday at Joanne Graff Field. Just a couple of days of some great softball, as we mentioned. The doubleheader for Florida State yesterday and today, Hofstra and Indiana will actually play a third time tomorrow morning. It's just a cool experience, Florida State getting back in that groove. And of course, you have to love what Josie Muffley just told us. Come on, like this is Florida State softball. We expected to be here in the top five. But this is a team that's making a lot of noise. Started to put some people on notice after a lot of people, even Coach Otto, is we know what to expect heading into 2022. And that's the precedence that's being set with this Florida State program year in and year out. So much tradition and so much winning expected. But I think that that's the coolest thing of it is you're no longer surprised. You're not surprised anymore when they make it to the World Series and when they get there and when they compete. It's who they are at this point. Mac Leonard doubled her first time up. At the go-ahead home run in the bottom of the sixth inning for the Seminoles, who improved to 14-0. And we mentioned earlier, one of just six remaining undefeated teams. Leonard takes the walk to kick things off in the bottom of the second. And as you mentioned, I know we were talking off-air before yesterday's games. The strength of schedule, too, that not only will pay dividends now come nine, May, but that's what makes the start maybe even more hardest. impressive when you've gone through the ringer and haven't just sat back at home. Highly competitive team, pretty young mix of some freshmen finding a lot of playing time, good senior leadership, good junior leadership, and so many good things going on in terms of just communication and cohesion on the Florida State side. 
been a fun group to watch and hear from over the last couple of days, playing with so much confidence. Came back, took down Florida A&M on Wednesday with a late rally in the sixth. As Harding takes the strike. It just seems like the sky's the limit because as Coach Josh says, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And we understand winning is hard, so even that win over Indiana, nobody's going to complain. They're going to sit back and say, hey, we found ourselves in a tough spot and we overcame that adversity. That's what it's all about. You know, previously, in years past especially, you look at the strength of schedule out of conference, and Coach and staff would generally have to load it on there with big games, UCLA, Florida, you know, SEC programs and Pac-10 Pac programs and Big 12 and Big 10 and every other team imaginable. Harding pops up in the outfields. Manto is there. And to finish my point, <laughs> that's no longer needed as much. That's still who she's going to be and what she's going to do for this squad just to see what they're capable of. But the ACC is now so powerful. You have Virginia Tech, you have Duke, you have Clemson, you have UNC, highly competitive teams getting big wins over opponents where now the in-conference schedule is seemingly comparable to other conferences. And I think that that's so exciting because now it's just a good mix in and out of conference. Do we give our flowers to Clemson now after what they did <laughs> down in Clearwater, even Notre Dame picking up a couple of big wins? Hey, it all helps the conference, but let's take a look at this pitch by Julia Absol. I mean, she spins the ball so well. She flips that change up frequently in all counts, and of course, Michaela Edenfield's gonna see it. Such a powerful hitter, trying to keep her a little bit off balance. Guessing maybe what Julia Absol's gonna give her, but again, really just trying to get her out of her own zone. Benfield misses on a 1 1 pitch. Seen her stay aggressive. Had that same success we saw yesterday in both games. She had highlight real home runs to add to her resume once again. 1 2. She pops it back to the rest of the press box. That's the cool thing, too, about Enfield. Went hitless, but. The four times she's gone hitless this year now, she has followed it up with multi-hit games this year. Yeah, it's all about failure recovery. Her ability to recognize moments and not make them bigger than they are. I know we mentioned it in the first game. They're playing UCLA and she hits a home run and she doesn't even say anything about it until after. Down the line to third and ruled foul. It's almost like a delayed celebration of, wow, that was really cool. I can't believe I did that. And I think that that's really impressive as an athlete because it's almost like she has like no face. You know what I mean? Your opponent has no face. And I know we've talked about that because it doesn't matter if it's a Wednesday night against a Division I mid-major or the biggest game of your, your career or your season at that point. It doesn't matter. The game is the game. Apsel wins the battle against Florida State star freshman. Now back a big Number smile nine, from her. After giving up the home run yesterday in the bottom of the first inning, she gets some revenge today. Julia Absol spins that ball so well up in the zone, just really getting underneath her pitches and able to really gain some leverage to allow that trajectory to really work its way up. And that's exactly what Hofstra's trying to preach. You want to shift focus to them because, like you said, it's that failure recovery where Coach Clark told us a few days ago, hey, we just want to come out and play full speed. If we make those mistakes, fine, we'll live with that, but don't hesitate. That's what leads to bad habits. You have to foster an environment that allows for mistakes to be made, because otherwise you're going to create scared athletes, and that's not good for anybody. So knowing that mistakes are going to happen and acknowledging that it's not the end of the world, but the way I respond is the most important piece to that puzzle. Clarity tips it back foul. Clark, the 05 grad from Hofstra, now taking over her alma mater in her first year. Clarity drove in a run her first time up. Let's see if she can extend the inning in a 1 2 count. Chases that one for strike three. A nice point from Lasco to her pitcher, Apsell. A scoreless inning.
for the Knowles as we head to the third in Tallahassee. Pat Sandercock coming off a shutout win yesterday against the Indiana Hoosiers. Picking up right where she left off. Retired all six batters she has faced so far today. I guess that's what you come to expect at this point after incredible performances in Clearwater last week. I know you were down there for a handful of those games. What did you love about the way she really dominated that area with so many teams there and came out as the best pitcher in America last week? I know how hard she has worked to build different pitches. You know, she's so successful down in the zone and has really worked to extend her tools and, and pitches that she has to offer to really expand the potential and ways to get batters out. She is going to be a pitcher that consistently allows for hitters to make contact, but is continually successful because they don't make contact well and they don't hit her balls very hard. Softly hit ground or off the bottom of the bat. We're quickly getting the first out of the third on Olivia Malinowski. Just incredible to think of what she did and who she had to do it against. Had the combined no hitter against UCF. Even so, gave up just three runs in nearly 22 innings of work against all ranked teams. Yeah, the most impressive were, of course, most recently, the wins against te Tennessee, Texas, Michigan, UCF, UCLA. Those are huge games. And for her to continue to show up for her teammates and for her school and just put on a show, I mean, you know, like I said, she's worked so hard in the offseason and in the bullpen with coaches. She's somebody that has always had a very successful drop ball, but has worked extremely hard to extend those pitches. She now has a rise ball. She's got a change up. She's matured so much in the circle. And I was even talking to Coach about it last night. I hit off Kat in probably 2019 um, on the junior national team she was playing and I was playing in the pro league. And I kind of remember seeing her and I'm like, okay, like I can see it. Like she's definitely got potential. She throws the ball hard. She's jamming me inside. And here I am, a, a pretty big left-handed hitter. And to see her grow and mature throughout the last couple years, and she is just a game changer for this program. And one pitch to Angelina Iapolo. We had Josie Muffley on in the last inning. We had Danielle Watson on as she was watching Cat pitch yesterday. That relationship, that one-two punch Florida State now provides in the circle is something that is going to be special to watch all year long you've got to be able to pitch by staff. And Kat's somebody that can throw in a complete game. She's got two on the season. She had 10 last year. But really her ability to come in and give different looks. She compliments Watson so well, and they work so well together. They've got Emma Wilson on their staff. And really just the ways in which they work together to really attack opponents. That ends up hitting the knee of Iapolo. Oscar has its first base runner the top of the third. At least she shows she's human sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> At least we know she can make a mistake every so often. Just trying to go in on this hitter, but unable to really establish that part of the zone. Gets Iapolo right in the knee there. I'm sure it hurts a little bit, but at least I'm a base runner. Picked foul. The number nine hitter, Devin Lasco, senior leader who has the tall task of trying to bring up a lot of young and inexperienced players in a Hofstra lineup that is, again, trying to rebuild a little. But this is a program that has a strong history. Lasco puts down a solid bunt. Cheryl scoops and throws her out at first. Ayapolo advances to second with two guns. Take a look, good attempt at execution there on the bunt, but Sid Sherrill just so solid at third base. It's really hard to get a ball by her at this point. He has held down the hot corner and made some great defensive plays this weekend. Now the top of the order back up with Chelsea Manto. Slap hitter taking that approach that she grounded out her first time up in first. Swing 
and a miss for strike one. Vandercock been so strong in the circle on our home field. Had the complete game against Kennesaw State to open the season. Had another one yesterday. Getting through those five innings against the Hoosiers. Anto can't put this one into play. Isn't it crazy to say that? She's only allowed one run in making her fourth start at home this year. That's what happens when you are a very effective pitcher and you have a great defense behind you. It's extremely hard as an opposing offense to really square you up and you know be effective in the box to make something happen out there. One, two is fouled back. It's not even just a run. It's of all of her appearances at home this year, she's only given up more than three hits twice. It's just incredible. Gave up five to Kennesaw State and then seven against Texas down in Clearwater. Just even the best teams can't hit off her. Looking for another strikeout here. Popped up to left. A Kaser steps in, and that'll do it for the top of the third. One runner left for Hofstra, as Apsell will come back out for the bottom half of the third. The Seminoles in control, control against the Pride, thanks to a five-run in the first inning. John Salisbury, Alex Powers, back with you. Four games in two days. That just sounds mentally exhausting, Alex. How do you stay in the fight at this point where, you know, again, Hofstra had about a four-hour layoff. Florida State came alive at the end of the win against Indiana. Now, want to stay focused with a five-run advantage. Yeah, you're, you're playing for a bigger purpose. You know, you're playing now and you're preparing yourself now for the rest of the season so that when you get to postseason and regionals and super regionals and hopefully Oklahoma, I'm ready, I'm confident, I've put my time in, I've failed and I've succeeded in big moments on both ends. And you really just start to put it all out there. So these moments now, these games, these at-bats, all preparation. Cheryl, that's one foul down the first base side. After coming back from Clearwater, Florida State kicked off this big homestand that started on Wednesday against Florida A&M. They'll actually play at the Rattlers next week to start March, but that's only a three-mile trip down the road. They're not really leaving Tallahassee until they go to Georgia Tech in that second week of March. So when you're home for this long, you get to settle in, get to sleep in your own bed, like you said. What does that do in just trying to find that chemistry and consistency? As Cheryl smacks one into right for a single. Having the comfortability to be where you live and you know wake up in your own bed, have breakfast, do your normal routine, it's huge and overall success and the ability to just be comfortable and that's home field advantage. And I think that that's I think the beauty of playing in Florida and living in Florida and playing in warmer states. You often have teams like Indiana, Hofstra, who are in colder climates, come down to you and play because they want the sunshine. Way Kaser hammers it foul down the third base line. Put that one into the open road. We have some people sitting out left field in their chair. Some passers by with beach volleyball playing in the background. Had a good crowd. Stop by and around for some great softball. Like you mentioned, Indiana and Hofstra. I think folks in those regions know what weather looks like this time of year. That's why Hofstra played down in Leesburg, Florida, just outside Orlando. To kick off their season for four games. Waycaser, it's a grounder to short. The out is made at second from Giordano, but Collins doesn't bother throwing it first. Bill Apsell has come in and maybe she's enjoying the sunshine a little bit too much because she's found a good groove at this stadium. Julia Apsell looks good. She's just competitive in the circle and Again, a younger performer and somebody you just want on your side to continue to work through moments and only a sophomore. So continuing to garner big games under her belt and really see what she's made of. Say, really, the only mistake she has made out there is giving up a two run triple to our next batter, Amaya Ross. Oh, 
Last time she was up at the plate at her first career hit. Great chance for her to take some at-bats with a big lead. You know, like you've said a couple times this weekend, there's just no teacher-like experience for Ross, who has come in mainly as a pinch runner so far this year. Yeah, super athletic, and I love to see her get the opportunity in the box and with a start. Somebody that bleeds garnet and gold through and through. Again, we said her dad played football here, so Seminole blood is in her system, and she loves to be here. And just somebody that Coach and the rest of the staff is going to continue to teach and see what she's made of because there is so much potential in her capabilities. Running over to second, Sway Kaser slides in safely. Good read by Wade Kaser on that ground ball, or dirt ball read, if you will, and the ability just to see it out of the hand of the pitcher, get a good jump, and advance an extra 60 feet. Now Florida State will substitute the pinch runner themselves. Good chance to get a look at Autumn Belvai. Pinch running for the Noles, number 14, Autumn Belvai. See what the freshman from Jacksonville can do in the batter's box facing the full counts. Ball four, and she'll take her base. Blankenship. Watches her teammates take first and second. Number five, That's a patient at bat by Amaya Ross. Somebody that only had three bats, three at bats coming into this game on the season, and now five under her belt. But so patient in the box, and the ability ability just to recognize quality pitches. Julia Absell will come off here in the bottom of the third. Let's see if the Knowles can add their five run lead when we return. Annabella Pisapia comes in to replace Julia Apsell. Two and a third coming on in relief of Haley Venturini. Started this game for Hofstra. Blankenship, the number nine hitter up. As we have now seen three of the four pitchers for Hofstra already. And that's a good game plan. Just kind of throw any arm that you can that you have at your disposal at these opposing hitters because, again, you're just trying to get different looks. Pisapia making just her second appearance of the season. And her first this weekend in Tallahassee. Sophomore from New Jersey faces Blankenship. Runners on first and second, inheriting a tough spot. I like to see these aggressive Florida State hitters. Pisapia comes out here just throwing what looks to be just really fastballs in and out and just trying to locate maybe something with a little bit of spin, but pretty minimal overall. And just these Florida State hitters kind of aggressive and ready to go. Blankenship. This one in the air, but it goes into her own dugout. Keep the count at one and two. Three of the four pitchers, and all three that we've seen today actually from Hofstra, all underclassmen. Good chance to get some experience. I know you're 25 to nothing. You want to keep it competitive. It feels like a spot where there's little to no pressure. And a called strike three to punch out Blankenship. Good job by Pisapia coming in, just aggressive and attacking the zone. This is on the outer part of the plate. A good take by Blankenship, but with two strikes, just not a pitch that you can let go. So really good location by Pisapia. Top of the order, comes back around. Ross with the grounder to second, took a weird hop to Collins, but coolly throws back over to first. Scoreless inning for Pisapia and a big smile going back to the dugout. Knowles lead it 5-0 through three. Now, 
We move to the fourth inning at Joanne Graff Field. Florida State, thanks to a five-run first, leads it over Hofstra 5-0. to zero. Now joined, as always, by the Seminoles head coach, Lonnie Alameda. Coach, what did you love about the way your team started this game in the first? Yeah, I mean, just uh, pitch by pitch, get some good swings off. Um, you know, they, uh, they're they a good team, so, you know, got to keep staying in it. Um, you know, kind of make sure that we stay on it pitch by pitch. <laughs> Coach, Bree enter, entering the game right now for Kat Sandercock. What do you want to see from her? Um, I like her mix speeds a little bit, take control, have command of her pitches, attacking the zone. So, um, you know, and then a few new people here on the defensive side of it too, you know, trying to get some freshmen some opportunities. So um, just the communication piece and, uh, you know, the defense stepping up for her. Thanks as always, Coach. Thank you all. Our first chance to look at enter for the first time this weekend opportunity for the junior. Making her fourth appearance after throwing three innings against Florida A&M this past Wednesday. Casey Collins, the number two hitter, leads off at the top of the fourth. Also a change behind home plate, Katie Bright in there to replace Michaela Edenfield. Enter, winds up hitting Collins to put her on first. Lead off this inning. Well, there's Bright, another one of those freshmen it's a much needed experience and a good opportunity. Coach John mentioned she's been able to put her young players in some spots, but more as pinch runners and substitutions in the field. What can at least this experience and obviously some at bats do to just find a groove? Here? You know what they say experience is the best teacher, and putting Amaya Ross at second base. Bright behind the dish, Bellevue in left field. You're gonna get things moving, but you're really gonna require the people around them that have been there already in the middle of this game to have to communicate and to really pull out the leadership within the people that are really generally your mainstay starters and what that's gonna look like to better really dive into the cohesion that's going on in the field. Now facing a 3-0 count. The Seminoles will regroup in the circle. And I said you kind of like to keep the move light. You get the spot just with your teammates. How do you settle down? Marie is she tries to string together some outs here. Look each other up in the face and just eye-to-eye -eye contact saying, hey, I've got you. I'm in this moment with you. I've got your back. Roll me a ground ball. Whatever that's going to look like, you got a runner on first base. So just really honing in on, hey, we're going to roll you a double play, and we're present with you, so don't worry. After the brief pause, Enter delivers a 3-0, gets the strike. Giordano waits for a 3 1. They take her base as Hofstra, their first two batters aboard, hit by pitch and walk. And this is a good opportunity for Enter, making again her fourth appearance this year. It's two thirds of an inning against Texas. Inning and a third against Loyal Chicago before Wednesday's three innings against Van U. Starts the third batter off strong with a first pitch strike. Sam Ward shot down the line. Struggling to start her season, struck out her first time against Kat Sandercock. Couple of hits this year. And she add to it here with Hofstra. Good chance to get back into this game. 
see Brianter just trying to really find her strike zone right now. What pitches am I going to throw well? And how am I going to be most effective? Just struggling a little bit to find the zone. And that's one thing that Coach Ed said about her. She wants her to work on attacking the zone and getting ahead of these hitters. Looked foul. Back behind home plates. Oscar has struggled over the course of their four games so far here in Tallahassee. Swing and a miss there. Hunter gets her first strikeout of the day. Keeps the runner stranded for now. Beautiful pitch by Brianter. Her fourth strikeout on the season. Not even close to the zone, but Sam Ward so aggressive on that pitch. Maybe it looked good, I'm not really sure, but great location by Brianter. Madison McKevitt, the lefty. Looks as strike one goes by. So after his first two batters, seeing three kind of settle in with a quick visit from her teammates. McKevitt flares this one near third. Cheryl nearly dives for the outs. Going to do her best Josie Muffley impersonation. Uh, you can see the wind knocked out of her a little bit. Sid Cheryl, great effort on that. Just lays out in an attempt to catch that ball, and you see it kind of pop up and get her right in the chin. I'm sure that doesn't feel good, but really good effort. Ooh, with the sun in her face, no visor for Sid Cheryl. This one popped up, another chance. We can't get to it in time. Maybe too winded to dive a second time. Yeah, right. A little bit of hesitancy on that one between her and Bright behind the plate. Probably not wanting to go face to face in a collision, but just a little bit of communication on that right off the bat. I mean, Bright's going to have a really hard time getting up quickly on a ball that far away from her. Another foul ball down the third base side. I think we're starting to see a little bit of a tendency here with McKevitt. <laughs> Lefty in the 0 2 count. Trying to avoid being another strikeout victim for Bree Enter. This one put into play. Blankenship waves everybody off in shallow left. Enter now is settled in after putting the first two batters on base. Donna Iaquinto. Brings it the first pitch, a pop up again, and this time it is Amaya Ross at second base to close out the top of the fourth. Florida State still up five to nothing, trying to add to it when we come back. A bright, sunny Saturday in Tallahassee as the number three Florida State Seminoles lead it over the Hofstra Pride five to nothing. We are joined by the Pride's head coach, Adrian Clark. Coach, I know you said to us before these games that you wanted to learn a lot about your team facing Power Five opponents five times in the span of three days. What are you looking for them to close out this weekend here? Yeah, honestly, uh, we're just looking for them to get good pitches and, and put some good cuts on it. You know, we're just make, we just have a, a good amount of uh, just misses, right? So we're looking to square some things up. Coach, what are you most proud of the last couple of games so far against Florida State, against Indiana? What are you going to go home with and really love your squad up on? Yeah, I think we're just going to go home knowing that we're fearless and, and uh, we're in every game, right? And there hasn't been a game that we've played yet that we haven't been in. Um, so we just need to use that as motivation to keep grinding. Coach, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, the one Coach Clark loves to say, right, we mentioned it a couple of times, but pointing the phrase, chasing the change. And we're still seeing that. You know, it can be so easy to hang your head after giving up five runs in the first inning. But now on to our third pitch pitcher for the Pride today. They have battled. They have stayed smiling. And they're going to try and carry that confidence and come CAA play. Change is inevitable, and it's all about what we do when our backs are against the wall, and we don't really know what's going to happen, and I think that that's so much of life, and that's why softball, specifically so much failure in the sport, so much 
ways in which you have to navigate really what's going on around you, sometimes out of your control, that really makes you a, st a strong woman. Mac Leonard leads off for the Seminoles. Had a double and walked her last time up in the second inning. Quickly takes a three ball, no strike count. I know you've been raving about her. This would be a trying to stay in it. Mac Leonard. Impressed and raised some eyebrows. I know we talked about freshmen trying to get that experience. It can be hard adjusting college life or just moving to a new school, those ACC expectations. Big talk with Coach Clark is our first base umpire. Has something to say to Pisapia. Yeah, it looks like he might have been critiquing something. Again, there's so many things that could cause an illegal pitch. Hands coming together, separating, coming back together, foot placement on the on the mound, and not really sure what he's saying. Previous pitch. Something back towards home plate. Our crew today made up of Steve Wenner, Lewis Soul, June Henry. They've been busy. It's now their sixth game in the last two days. And it lays off from the count, takes strike one. Back to back strikes for her. It seems weird, right? You tell me, is it hard to improve in this environment looking specifically at Hofstra when you play those five games in three days? Is it just a whirlwind or can you kind of slow it down and see this is a moment, this is a play where I can learn? No, I think you go home every night. If you're any bit of a competitive, high level athlete, you go home every single day you compete and you reflect on what that day looked like for you, whether or not you contributed, whether or not you succeeded, and the ways in which you failed. And I think that no matter how many games these teams are playing right now, it's the reflection at night that really brings them back to earth and allows them to get better. First pitch strike on Harding for Pisapia. Leonard after taking her second walk, trying to come around and score again for the Seminoles. Oh. Oh, web jams left and right for everyone wearing garnet and gold today. Troy Cameron, a former baseball player himself with the hands over there on the left field line, comes up smooth with it like it's nothing. If you're gonna go for it, you <laughs> cannot miss yeah, that, huh? break a finger. This one gets by Lasco. Leonard takes second. Wild pitch has another runner in scoring position. That pesky sun just won't go down. Picking up most of the infield here. Harding pops it up into the net. A little bit of hesitancy on that swing by Kaylee Harding. Just kind of recognized it to something that maybe looked like she'd want to attack it, but then kind of let up a little bit, which is why you've got the flare. But again, it's just one of those instances, if you're going to commit, really commit and either swing and miss or like just really try to get a piece of that ball, which I mean, ultimately with two strikes. I was about to ask you that. How do you keep good habits, even for a young player like Harding, who's had plenty of at-bats, but up five to nothing, how do you stay focused in the spot? Just knowing, again, that every at-bat matters, and you're never able to really look past an at-bat because everyone is going to be crucial to the success of your entire season. Harding jams one down the line. Leonard will easily score. 
And it's a stand-up double for the star sophomore, Kaylee Harding. Beautiful piece of hitting by Kaylee Harding. Third RBI of the day, second double on the game. Beautiful swing, gets her hands extended so well on that ball. Let's take a look. Ball in the inner part of the plate, she recognizes it, recognizes it immediately out of Pisapia's hands and just gets her hands extended so well to drive that ball down the left field line. Katie Bright now on. And into the batter's box with a runner in scoring position. First at bat of the year of her career. We saw Leonard give some advice to the freshman before stepping in. What would you say to her? All I'd be doing is trying to hype her up. Don't want to give her too much information. She's played softball her whole life. She knows what she's doing. Well hit ball to third. It was Ward who was all over it. Really chance of driving her on herself. Debbie Cleary. Really has an opportunity later in this game. And that's a quality at bat. But again, it's like you look at these, these seniors and Mac Leonard and everyone else that is just very successful. Sid Cheryl, Dev Flaherty, seniors, juniors on the field. Then you have your, your youngsters, your sophomores, Kaylee Harding, your freshmen. And all you're trying to do when it comes to imparting knowledge on them is allowing them to be present and to do what they do. You know that they're talented. And it's really just keeping that present state of mind of, hey, you've done this your whole life. Nothing's changed. It's just the competition's a little bit better. Flaherty with one back to the pitcher. Pisapia loses her glove and the ball. Both runners are safe. Now that is the middle, number 24, Sydney Sherrill. Here comes one of Florida State's best hitters. Program history, Sid Cheryl. Dev Flaherty doing what she does, putting the ball in play well and aggressively. Pisapia just can't come up with it. But again, when you're that close to the hitter, I mean, I don't blame her, right? But Dev Flaherty kind of laughing a little bit. She's like, whoo, I really got away with that one. Lays off to take a first pitch strike. She just passed you in the all time <laughs> RBI record book here at Florida State with a couple of big runs driven in down in Clearwater last weekend. She beat my doubles record, beat my RBI record. She's just taken all my records. But hey, if somebody's going to do it, I'm glad it's her. Sid Cheryl, somebody that's such a quality teammate, quality athlete, quality person. I love that she chose to wear garnet and gold and somebody that, again, I saw her through her recruiting process. So to be able to see it come full circle, she's so good and, and just a, a great person all around. In the meantime, you see Flaherty now on second. Has to drive in two more for Cheryl. But like you said, less games. Than Cheryl being the benefits of that extra year. But how about this? Now number three all time, facing Maddie in seconds. Wow, Jesse Warren really crushed all of that. I don't think <laughs> anybody's gonna touch Jesse for a while. Uh, she's really good. As hot a start, Michaela Edenfield has gotten off to in her first season. <laughs> Those are some high expectations for her. A payoff pitch to Cheryl. Loops one into shallow left. One run is in. Flaherty holds up at third. Good diving attempt made by Ward to keep another run off the board. But it's enough for Cheryl to move to seconds. Look at a 7 0 lead. Sid Cheryl is a very dynamic player that we've seen find success throughout the duration of her career, all in different ways. She's somebody that Coach had kind of talked about last night. You know, she came in her, her freshman year, so much success with the long ball, doubles, very, just a lot of power, very strong hitter at the time. 
and has since kind of like just kind of navigated her way through a lot of singles. She was figured out how to be pitched. She's still finding a lot of success, but really just now a base hit hitter that the Knolls are really going to rely on to continually come through with clutch and timely hits. Clarity remains at third. Hofstra will quickly conference as we have another freshman coming into the game. Christina Hartley. Number 27, Christina Hartley. St. Petersburg. Big smile on her face. As we mentioned, another young player, Autumn Belvi, steps in trying to put the nose over the run rule limit. Something I love about Coach is just her ability to work people in. And you have Autumn Bellavi still looking for her first hit on the season and somebody that could continue to be a big part in the Seminole lineup just throughout her years and contribute in different ways. A lot of capabilities, you know, she's a good defensive player in the outfield and somebody that can run the bases as well and just overall going to find her way year after year, opportunity after opportunity, working herself into the lineup. Making her sixth at bat of the year. Lays off to take a two and one count. You can see it there, even just with the anticipation of knowing you have those runners in scoring position. I'm telling you, you want to hit, and you, you go into the box ready. And so it's just that fine line of being patient while still aggressive. Ovai lifts it back foul. And a two strike count. The freshman Amaya Ross on deck. Put it what? So it goes harmlessly to Ross. That's the beauty of an opportunity like this. There's so many things that Bellavi can do right now to just find success. You've got runners on second and third. They're likely going to run a down angle, try to get that eighth run across, and that's just how Florida State runs the bases. So she can pull something to the right side. She can hit something on the ground. That comes up empty there on the swing. Pusapia goes high. It's the strikeout on the freshman. That's a really good pitcher's pitch by Pusapia. Bellavise thinks it looks good. Something up in the zone. Her eyes get really big. Wants to go after it. And Pusapia just a little bit too much upward spin. Ross has already driven in two runs. The triple back in the first inning off Apsell. Walked in the third. That good eye to work. Crowd waiting in anticipation for another big seminal hit. Ross belts one in the air and over the wall. A home run trots. Amaya Ross with her first career home run. Amaya Ross, RBIs three, four, and number five on the game. Such a beautiful swing. From the young freshman. And how about the only upperclassman on the field there for the Knowles going crazy after this moonshot. Dev Flaherty is so fired up on that pitch. Amaya Ross takes full advantage, something over the heart of the plate, and she is pumped. You have to love the genuinity that these girls have for one another. Flaherty welcome her other freshman, Hartley at the plate, and then Ross. It's a cool high five yeah. there. I figured Flaherty was going to go sprint out behind the wall and go pick up that ball for her to save <laughs> with how much energy, energy she has brought. Lincolnship shoots one up the middle. Two out single for Brooke Blankenship. Seminoles now with the 10-run lead can close it out. Three more outs in the top of the fifth.
Coach Ah and Coach Clark on the field to make some switches. Seeing Hofstra's fourth pitcher of the afternoon come into the circle as the Noles will make a change themselves potentially. Well, as we wait for our new pitcher to step in and take a quick warm up, Nicky Mullen will be on for her sixth appearance this year. How about a quick game summary? Because after the Seminoles took a while to get going against Indiana with the three run sixth, they got off on the right foot starting in the first inning. Bailey Harding did damage with a double through the gap. And that just opened the floodgates. Yeah, no doubt about it. Mac Leonard double, Kaylee Harding double, lots of blocks, more hits from Devin Flaherty, and the triple in the first by Amaya Ross. At five spot, a good start. Pat Sandercock pulled after three innings, and then just moments ago, a first career homer for Amaya Ross. Pretty quiet throughout the middle couple of innings in the game, and Amaya Ross just breaks the game open with that big swing. Three run home run. She's having a great day. Like you said, the best teacher is experience for Ross. Ball the at bats. Again, we've seen her as the pinch runner a couple of times this weekend and throughout the year. But does this kind of force Coach Oz's hand and saying, oh, maybe she can't hold her own against some more opponents as we get near conference play? I think that's the beauty of having depth. You just never know when it's going to be you. Mullen gets the quick out to end the fourth inning, but five more runs come across home thanks to Amaya Ross. The Knowles try to close out win number 15 as we head to the fifth. Wilson. Coach Oz's squad on the brink of a 15-0 start. Five more runs come across in the third as Amaya Ross has been the superstar so far in this game. Cool moment for her. We will see a new Knoll in the circle. Emma Wilson's going to come into the game. Emma's got a good curveball, and Coach just was kind of extending and expanding what she has a little bit in her pitches and kind of working a little bit more drop, a little bit something off speed, and then trying to still get Emma to go back to that curveball. So we'll see a good mix of pitches, really trying to work around the zone and attack the hitters. Started the game against Florida A&M on Wednesday, was pulled after giving up a leadoff walk to start the second inning. Gave up a home run in that top of the first. Let's see if she can close things out. Malinowski leads off for the pride. And Coach Oz said it was a good lesson for her young pitcher. Again, trying to get some more reps and knew she'd have an opportunity this weekend to come in. He said, hey, don't hang your head after giving up that kind of mistake. We just want to see you smile through all the success and maybe some of the failures you have. That's the thing, you can't succeed in big moments without failing in big moments. So just getting that exposure to be able to wear it and either win or lose and learn, it's that's what it's all about. It's all about the process to get to where you wanna go. A swing and a miss there. She pitched nearly six innings in a start against Loyola Chicago. Has also done some relief work against Mercer, South Alabama and UCF and that combined no-hitter with Kat Sandercock. Two and two. Malinowski <laughs> fights it off. Boy, K time here at Joanne Graff Field. Hey. Concord Invitational welcoming Hofstra and Indiana this field for a three-team tournament. Again, Hofstra will still have one more chance to pick up a win before going back to Long Island tomorrow night. One up, one down for Wilson as she gets the strike. Great job by Emma Wilson just coming in and going right at these hitters. That's exactly what Coach wants. 
good attempt by Olivia Malinowski, but really proud of Emma Wilson and just her ability to come in and contribute for her team. Just off the plate facing her second batter. Angelina Iapolo trying to get on base for Hofstra. Iapolo was hit in her first at bat back in the third inning. Just gets a piece of that one, but I love it. You look at Wilson, what Coach Ah was saying. She reminded us of Haley Mudge of, hey, I don't know if that kid's gone four for four or 0 for four today. She's always smiling, always bouncing, always a great teammate. It's just something all of our young players can learn from when it isn't their best day. Over towards second, Ross fields and throws, but not in time. Hofstra avoids the no-hitter. Iapolo on board with a smile here in the top of the fifth. Devin Lasco, star senior for the Pride. Takes ball one high. Lasco, a senior leader. Somebody Coach Clark said the rest of the team looks to so heavily, has been a mainstay for this program, and is so proud that she's on her team. Part of a 16 and 16 team a year ago, and finished fifth CAA play. And that's the thing too, you know, Depending on if you're a Florida State fan or a Hofstra fan, you look at this game and go, oh, damn it, oh, man, what a dragging the Seminoles had. But look, not only did the Pride hold their own yesterday in a 3 0 loss, as we wait for the 1 0. Hofstra, this is only going to make them better come conference play. They play two teams that won a whole lot of ball games last year and have a whole lot of talent. If you can take something from this trip, and I like what you asked Coach Clark, hey, what are you proud of? What can you use moving forward and learn a lesson here? That'll pay dividends. Like, yeah, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to build for the rest of the season. And, you know, right now is the most important, but let's be honest, postseason is going to be the most important when it gets there. So they are playing every single day in these games. They are showing up every single day for practice to best equip themselves for success later on. Roller foul, keep it a 2-2 count. It'll be fun to keep our eye on this program for Hofstra and Coach Clark, a legend in her own right at her alma mater after helping win six tournament games in 2003 and 2004 combined. It takes a long time to build a program and especially to make it what you want. You come in here and like, let's just call it what it is. You don't always have your recruits, right? So these are not necessarily Coach Clark's recruits. And so she's essentially working with a team that she might not know very well. No, I think she's been extremely lucky to have the seniors that she does. Swing and a miss for strike three. And the Seminoles are now one out away. That's the hardest part sometimes. I remember when I came into Florida State, I was not recruited by Lonnie and Travis and formerly Craig. I was recruited by the old coaching staff with Coach of, you know, the Santiago brothers and everything else. And so you come into a program and you don't necessarily know what to expect. But again, we're all extremely fortunate to be where we are and to end up wherever the game takes us. And you just have to recognize it when you see it and be appreciative of the opportunities that you're given. Coach Clark is a Florida native herself, just outside of Tampa. Said she fell in love with the school on her first visit and signed five days later. She thinks Hofstra is a hidden gem in the Northeast and several great programs and majors as that school continues to build. Said, I know the future is bright, but again, it will take us some time to get back to where we were. She said a fun challenge. Trying to remember our history and build towards something in the future. She said we may take some licks this year. We started 0-4 down in Leesburg last week. 
might not have a win going back home tomorrow, but the message is that we as coaches believe in them. Almost a good play made there over a third by Hartley. Instead, just get some stains on the jersey. Runners on first and second for Hofstra. Manto legs it out, and it brings up Casey Collins with two outs. Collins got hit the last time up in the fourth inning. Top of the Odles order, circling back around. Chance to maybe one or two off Wilson. Again, it's cool to see Sander Cock take those first three innings, but they will get some more experience for Bree Enter and Emma Wilson. Chopper hit towards second. Ross is interfered with, and that'll do it. Florida State with five in the first, five in the fourth. Win it in five against the Hofstra Pro. Hugs all around, great game. Florida State really busted open. First inning, big fourth inning. Amaya Ross, no doubt about it, the superstar of the day. Five RBIs, seeing the ball so well, but up and down the Seminole lineup. Looks really, real great. And now Florida State, five and 15 in hope for the first, for the fourth time in program history. But even just with the second time under Coach Shaw, that 2019 team, she said to us earlier this week, you know, that was a team that was fresh off a national championship. They got back to campus a couple months later and said, hey, let's run it back. Yeah. Let's do this thing again. And just to see that it was this team to start 15 and 0. Five ranked opponents last weekend. Tip your visor to them because, yeah, you start in the top 10, you have a lot of expectations, but who really thought Florida State would make this much noise in the first month? No doubt about it, they have a fire lit underneath them. They came off an extremely successful 2021 campaign, runners up in the Women's College World Series, so they know exactly what they're trying to get back to. They've, they've been there, so many of them have lived it, have experienced it, and have won on the biggest stage. And no doubt that that's exactly what they're shooting for right now. So the question now is, you saw it. They made Women's College World Series two out of those three previous times. How does this team remain consistent, focus on the much larger goal? They've been on the biggest stage. They know how to get there. They know what it takes. And so every single day, they're working and chipping away at opportunities to get them back right where they want to be. Singing along with the crowd here at Joanne Graff Fields. Three shutout wins, using a rally in the sixth inning to get by Indiana. A fun weekend for all involved in Tallahassee. Such a big smiles as Florida State will take a few days off before playing at Florida A&M. A total team effort up and down the lineup. A lot of freshmen getting it done in the back half of this doubleheader. And the star of the game, who else but a freshman? Amaya Ross with a two-run triple and the home run shot in the bottom of the fourth inning. She is on with us now. Amaya, how good do you feel after those two big hits today? It feels amazing, honestly. We worked so hard for this, so. I'm just really excited right now. Amaya, what are you thinking when you're in the box? You're seeing the ball so well, so what is your self-talk? Honestly, in the box, we work on self-talk a lot at practice, so I'm really just working on seeing the ball up and getting a good pitch and getting my swing off. Florida State is now 15-0 for just the fourth time in the program's history. Now, I know this is your first year, and you're just trying to adjust to college life, but what has been so cool about this team and how you guys have started? This program is just so amazing. Honestly, it's just so much fun. Like every game, whether I'm playing or not, just learning from everybody and just playing all for the team, giving our all to the team every day. 
Amaya, what are you most proud of for the rest of the season that you guys are looking forward to and, and really what you've accomplished so far? I'm just proud of this team's fight. Like, even if we don't start the game our best, we never give up and we stay in and we go one pitch at a time. Amaya, thanks so much for your time. Go celebrate the win. <laughs> Thank you. The second generation, Noel, making dad proud today, driving in half the FSU runs. Boy, that was a lot of fun this weekend. Four games, four wins for Matt Leonard in number three, Florida State. They remain one of just six unbeaten teams in softball as we move towards March. So big thank yous to hand out here before we sign off for my partner, the All-American Alex Powers, the rest of our incredible Seminole Productions crew. I'm Sean Salisbury. So long and good afternoon from Tallahassee.